In this video, I'm going to show you how you can self-host BSL using Docker. Now, what BSL is, it's a lightweight server monitoring tool that gives you like your overview usage of, as you can see on my screen here, like super CPU usage, but not just that, it also gives you Docker CPU usage as well, as well as memory uh, usage between the host and you know how much docker is using as well the key point here is that you know we want to make sure that we're monitoring our hosts all the time and we want to see you know how much is our docker containers using when we're doing self-hosting and if you're watching my videos you're no doubt deploying a lot on docker so you want to know both how well is the host going but how much is my docker uh, containers using up of my host and it's not just monitoring, we've also got alerting here as well. So let's get started with Bissell. I will give you an overview of it and we'll just get a good idea on how everything works and then I'll show you how you can get it deployed as well. Also, before we get started, I just wanted to say that I do have a merch store here. I've got some cool hoodies, uh, sweaters, hats and stuff like that. I'm currently wearing it at the moment. I don't know if you can <laughs> see properly. But yeah, if you're keen to support and if you're keen just to grab some stuff, uh, they're actually good quality as well. They're not like your typical merch. I just, I wanted to say I wanted to wear. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, uh, that's enough of that plug. Let's get uh, started. So on the front page of Bissell, what we can see here is you've just got a straightaway high level view of the systems that you have as part uh, integrated into Bissell. And as you can see here, I have Electron Cloud and Sandbox. So Electron Cloud is like my main server, and then we've got Sandbox. So high level view straight away, you can see the CPU, memory, and the disk. The way this all works is that we're just dropping a Docker agent on our hosts, and then that talks back to our Bissell server, and then Ta-da, you've got all the CPU, memory, and the disk usage. It's actually really straightforward to implement, and I'll show you that in a second. Now, if we click onto the sandbox, that's the view I was just showing you before, so as you can see here. So I've got a few things that don't come through, so the disk I.O. and the bandwidth. I have to have a better look into that uh, on why that's not coming through. Coming back to the home screen here, as you can see, we can add a system. So if we wanted to, I'll show you this in a second. We can add the name, the, the IP of the host, uh, the port. So you just got to make sure that this port is available. And then if you hit copy Docker Compose, it gives you a Docker Compose that you just paste on your host and it will connect. I'm going to connect my NAS or I'm going to connect uh, my Raspberry Pi or something uh, to this. And then on the right hand side, we can see that we have a little bell here. This is the key part. You know, monitoring is good, but we're not always staring at a screen, right? So we want the alerting functionality as well. And that's what Bissell will give you. And as you can see here, if I click this little bell, you can see I have an alert set up. So I'm going to get an alert when the CPU usage goes over 85%, as well as the memory usage and the disk usage. Now, how does the alerting work? Well, if I come over to this little profile up here, let me just zoom in a bit so you can see a bit better. And if I click on this here, we can see we've got users, systems, logs, and backups. This takes you to like the back end where everything's configured. So if I just click users, for example, and I'm going to log back in here. So I've just logged into like the back end of Bessel here. And this is where you do a lot of the additional configuration. So if you want to add any new users, you can do that here. You can see I have alerts as well. So any alerts that I have set up, you can see them here. So you can see those sandbox alerts that I have, they're all individuals and you can see them here. And you can see if any are triggered, you can see that it's false, but I'm going to trigger it so you can see what the alert looks like. You've got the container stats, so all of the core metrics here, the system stats and the systems that I'm monitoring, so Electron Cloud and the sandbox. Now, if I come over to logs, you can see logs here as well, people just logging in, uh, any changes, you know, just general good logging. If you're gonna use this for production systems, it's always good to have all that logged. Now, if we come to the settings here, we can see we can change the application name if we want, and then the application URL, so anywhere you click, it gets redirected. I'm using a actual domain name for mine. The key part here is the mail settings, right? So the mail settings you can see here. So I use Mailgun, right? Mailgun is like a free service where I can use this uh, SMTP server and it will send out the, uh, the alerts for me. Now, you, you, I can, I believe you can just set up even like a Gmail or something like this as well, but I just use Mailgun. It just makes it really easy. It's free as well for like a thousand um, emails a month, and I don't go over that. I have this plugged in the Proxmox, everything like that. So I just use, uh, yeah, again, the Mailgun service. So once I have that configured, you, the mail's set up, all those alerts and everything will go to my email address, so like the email of the admin user. So I'll do a test email in a second, but we'll just continue going through some of these settings. So for the file storage, if you are running low or you're just running this on quite a lightweight server, you can actually use S3 storage uh, if you would prefer. So you can just toggle this and then you can put in your uh, settings here and away you go. 
backups so it's always good to back up uh, so you can set up backups as you wish it's pretty simple you just click uh, the initialize new backup give it a name otherwise it will just generate one for you and you can click start backup and bam we have a backup now so I can download this I hit allow and now I can use that to restore if anything ever happened to this deployment now if you followed my video on authentic you can use it here uh, if you want to use that for your authentication. You can see here they have so many authentication methods. And then if they, the one that you want isn't here, you've got OpenID, which will, should cover the rest of the uh, options. Now, if you're using tokens or anything like that, you can set the actual settings on them here. And then if you want to create any admins and stuff like that, this is where you do it. So I think I've covered pretty much everything in terms of this out. It's actually straightforward, except for adding the host. Um, and sending the test email. So what I'm going to do now is just send a test email really quick. So see the sandbox, this disk uh, alert here, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna change that value to just 20 because I know that's going to trigger the alert. I'm gonna hit save changes and we'll just wait for that to trigger. Bam, there you go. Uh, can I make that any bigger? Yep, there we go. So you can see that I've now got an alert, an email sent to me saying, hey look, disk usage on sandbox is 68.6%. That's all you need to know, right? You just need an alert. Okay, something's up. You can go uh, sort it out. So let me change that back to the setting that I had. I believe it was 80. Uh, so let's just change that and hit save changes. Great, so what we can do now is we can actually add a host, right? A new one, I'll show you how that works. So back onto the main screen here, all we need to do is add system like I showed you before. I'm going to add a techdocs.local. So techdocs.local for me is a Raspberry Pi that I have that runs Pi Hole and stuff like that. Cool, so it's 192.168.168.107. Right, I'm going to copy this Docker Compose. So it's in my clipboard now, and we're gonna jump over to that server. So I've connected to my techdocs.local server now. So what I need to do is deploy that Compose file, right? So what I can do here is I'll just change directory into uh, documents and then containers. And I'm going to make a new directory called best cell uh, agent, right? So I'm gonna change directory into that. And now what I can do here is I can just do a nano docker-compose.yaml and hit enter. Paste that compose in just like that. Ah, and this explains why I didn't have the IO stats. You can see that this is commented out the file system. So um, if it's running on SDA1, then I can uncomment this and this should just work. I don't, I'm not sure if it is running on SDA1. I'll just uncomment it and see what happens. <laughs> and we'll just quickly cover it. So you can see here that we're using the agent image. Uh, the container name is going to be called BSL Agent. Uh, network mode is host. It needs to be connected to the host, of course, to get those specs. And it's going to connect to your Docker socket so it can actually get the stats of your containers, right? It's going to be running on port 45876. It's quite like a, uh, I wouldn't say like a unique port, but it's a port that's typically not used in self-hosting deployment. So that shouldn't really conflict with anything. And this key here is the key that... Um, is going to be used for the connection between Bissell and the agent. And then we've got the file system here, right? Which is what we just seen before. So I can save this and I can do a docker compose up hyphen D. And this will deploy that agent. The agent's going to talk back to the Bissell uh, server. So we'll wait for this to deploy. There we go. Nice and easy. So I've deployed the compose now. And as you can see here, the agent must be running on the server to connect. So that's why we deployed the compose first. So now I can click add system and there we go. Just like that, it's connected. And we can see the CPU, the memory and the disk. So let's click onto it and we can see now the CPU usage will slowly come trickling in. And then we've got the Docker CPU usage coming through as well. And we can see exactly which container is using which, you know, how much memory and how much CPU. So we've got the memory coming through, we've got the Docker memory, the disk usage, cool, that's coming through, and we've got the disk IO coming through, as well as the bandwidth. So we've got all the stats coming through now. It's just gonna take a while to populate because as you can see, um, it's gonna be across the hour. Just before I get into deploying Bissell, I know you're probably going, oh, what now? <laughs> I just wanted to say a big thank you for all the support. It's been amazing. If you need any help with anything, jump to the Discord. A link will be in the description. And also, if you are watching and you find these videos helpful, please subscribe. It helps a lot. And like 80% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. And it kind of makes sense. People just are looking for quick help and then they just go away. But if the video does help you, just clicking subscribe, one second to do it. It helps me a lot. Um, and it's just a way for you to show appreciation as well. So I appreciate it. Anyway, I'm going to show you how you can now get Vassal set up for yourself.
So this is the Basel uh, GitHub page. And as you can see here, it's pretty much like any other GitHub page. I've just got a good overview of everything. And then a link here is to their Compose. And it's very straightforward, as you can see here, to deploy Basel server. If you've deployed uh, Compose before, this will just be <laughs> very straightforward. So all we need to do, pretty much exactly what we did for deploying the agent, we're going to copy this and go to the host that's going to be running this our server, right? So find that server that you're going to nominate to run this. I'm going to deploy this on my sandbox server. So I've connected to my sandbox server now. So we're going to make a folder called for BSL because I make a folder for any of my servers that are running Compose. It just makes things way tidier. So what I'm going to do is just go make a directory, BSL, right? And we're going to change directory into there. And then like we did for the agent, we're just going to make another compose file. And we can paste it into the Docker compose YAML file. And we can see here, we're not using the agent one now. This is the actual uh, server. And it's going to be running on port 8090. Now this is probably in use. So I'm going to change this to 8190. Uh, but so you just want to make sure that this is running on a port that's not used, right? Don't change this port. Okay, don't change the one on the right hand side, just change the one on the left hand side. This is the one that you will use to connect to. So 8190 should be fine for me. Now it's going to need a volume where it's going to store everything. And it's just going to be a local bind. So it's going to be expecting a folder in the directory where the Docker compose file is. And that folder is going to be called VSL data, right? So all I need to do is I just copy this name. We can save this compose file and we'll make that directory. There we go. And now if I do an LS, we can see we now have the BSL data, which is what the composer is expecting. And the reason we make it is if I do an LL, we want this folder to be owned by our user. Because if we let Docker create it, it's going to be owned by root. And then you can get uh, permission issues and then, you know, uh, the, the container won't be able to write to the host and you can get a whole bunch of issues. So just make sure you make that folder first. Right, so we have all of that, right? We have the BSL data and the Docker compose. So what we can do now is just do a Docker. Uh, compose up hyphen D and hit enter and I already had the image pulled uh, so if you don't have the image pulled it might take a couple more seconds uh, for that to pull but then it should be up so now if we just list that compose file again we should be able to connect to it now on the host IP address on port 8190 so let's give that a try so I don't know if you can see at the top here at the address bar, I'm going to go to sandbox.home on port 8190. The reason I can do sandbox.home is because I just have a DNS all set up. So we'll hit enter. And there we are. We are at the BSL uh, <laughs> admin creation screen. Again, this stuff is so easy to set up. It's great. So we set a, a username, put the password in again, and we can hit create account. And there we go, we're in. So now again, everything I just explained to you before about adding the systems and stuff like that, you're good to go. Now you can add them in, you can set your alerts up uh, with the mail, we'll log in, and then again, if you wanna go to the settings, the mail settings, you wanna use uh, the SMTP, and you can set all of this up. Now again, if you've got any more questions, jump into the Discord, I'm more than happy to help. Um, it's pretty straightforward though. Deploy the Docker Compose for the server. Once that's all set up, deploy the agents on the other host that you want. Uh, that you want to be connected and then you're good to go, right? You've got everything running. You've got the agents in feeding in the information you need to your BSL server uh, and then you can add all the extra stuff on top of it as you like. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, any questions, Discord, YouTube comments, more than happy to help. Um, check out the merch if you're keen on grabbing some. Um, for Kiwis and Aussies, I've got uh, a link at the top of the store page for another site that might be a bit cheaper for shipping. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.